Hey folks, Steve here with a, I guess, look back video for a game that came out roughly a year ago, and that is Al Nofi's Imperium Romanum, aka Imperium Romanum 3, third edition of Imperium Romanum. I own the first and the second editions, though my first edition is missing some components. My second edition uh, is just fine, though uh, the second edition game's map is just really ugly. And so a year ago, I was super stoked to receive uh, Imperium Romanum 3. Uh, and indeed, the map for Imperium Romanum 3 is beautiful. Uh, looks really good. Um, and back then, I had recorded a video of me trying, like, the first, one of the first intro scenarios. And, um... Basically, I probably made some rules mistakes, but it, it went okay. Uh, and the problem around that time was that the game needed errata in a, in a lot of ways. Um, and I still have some major problems with the scenario book. I think there's a lot of uh, errata that needs to be identified in the scenario book. And I'll get to that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, and the one thing that's troubled me with this game is that it took three to four months for the first errata document to be created from one of the developers of the game. And then after that, or around that time, which was around the time I created an unofficial FAQ errata document and published it to BoardGameGeek, I kind of gave up on the game for a while. I was frustrated with the frequency of support for this game from the publisher, um, I guess I'm a little spoiled. I'm used to a lot of developers and designers really working to be engaged with the community and fix things up so that folks can continue to enjoy the product that they purchased as a consumer. I mean, for whatever reason, I it was just really irritated with how this game was being supported. Um, there were a lot of questions asked, and, and for a long time there were not answers to those questions, a lot of them potentially game-breaking questions. And all it really required would have been, or has been, you know, for someone with knowledge of the game to come and explain the case. And if there's something wrong in the rules, we get the errata for it. Um, so then after that, you know, after I walked away from it, there has been activity in the community of various posts and questions and trying to figure out the rules and what's real and how are things handled. Um, and I have my own thread that I just posted the other day, which I'll get to. But... Part of my sort of like, oh, okay, well, it's been a year, it's been a year, has, you know, since the game was released, has things, have things gotten any better from the March-April time frame of this year? Uh, and I was surprised to find that it has a little bit. Um, so if you were to go out to Board Game Geek, you would find nothing too new uh, other than some various... Uh, forum posts where people are asking questions about uh, game, things that maybe need to be answered via errata or someone knowledgeable of the game, but they don't really have much in the way of true answers some of the time. Uh, if you looked on Consim World, you would similarly find the old errata document from March-April. But, if you went out to Decision Games, and you went to E-Rules, and then you scroll down to Others, and then you scroll down through this list of stuff, you would find Imperium Romanum Clarifications and Errata, September 27th, 2019, which is, you know, like a month ago, a little over a month ago. And by golly, there's some new errata here. Look at that. And they they were even nice enough to put the new tag on stuff that have been updated since the last scenario update. Or, or I'm sorry, the errata update. And so, this is some good stuff. It, it, and I, I will say, the new errata document is helpful. It, it explains things in a way, uh, it adds some new clarifications that I think are really important to the game and understanding some pieces of the puzzle. Now, um, some of these things, like fixing the Sousa problem for Scenario 41, that occurred and is good. There's some there's some various stuff in here, right? That that is good or useful. The only problem is it's not enough. 
<laughs> There's still more errata that needs to be... What's the word? Processed, I guess, or approved or acknowledged by somebody in, a, in, a, in an official capacity. Because April of last year, I created this document and put it on BoardGameGeek. This was my attempt at an FAQ unofficial errata document where I did what I could to capture the errata uh, that I could find and recognize. Some of these things have been around since second edition and were recognized in second edition, but for some reason the fix was never carried forward to third edition, like this one uh, here. Uh, there's various other things I found um, that I've tried to add here for the benefit of other people. Again, Scenario 41's got a bunch of stuff wrong with it. Um, and I think this is like one of the new scenarios that they added to the game. And just biffed it a little bit because there's some stuff that doesn't make sense and you need to read through this. The new errata actually addresses a couple of these bullet points. So when I uh, get the chance, I'm gonna what I'm going to do, I'm going to update this document with, you know, I'm going to include a link to the latest errata. And then I'm going to go through here and basically update what needs to be updated in light of that errata. And then, you know, you'll have a new version of this file to hopefully help you alongside the latest errata document. A lot of these questions here uh, that I had answered, that I had found on Consum World and BoardGameGeek, a lot of these were like the subject of these new clarifications in September. So a lot of these, you know, orange text questions are going to become part of the uh, green text. Yes, official answers with errata provided. The, the questions have been answered, which is cool, which is good. I'm, I'm glad for that. Um, a lot of this stuff up here is not totally addressed yet. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if the person who put together this uh, September 27th file was only looking in the same place as I was looking, like Consum World and Board Game Geek forums, but did not open up this file to see what else has been collected. I think that's a bummer. Um, I would I would encourage them to do that so that we can try to fix up the game if we can. Uh, and yeah, so uh, you know we again a, a year later there is still some goodness here, but uh, here here's what I'm still worried about. I had to when I did my my thing. I to me this 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 is an opinion maybe backed up by facts, but it just to explain it, I get the feeling like with this third edition, Decision Games, the folks who are the, the, the developers working with the designer, focused on the first half of the scenario book. And they put more work into that. And then when it comes to the later half of the scenario book, I think they just did not, I think they just did not put the same level of effort in. Which is why when I was doing my analysis of, of the materials and trying to find stuff that didn't make sense, I worked from backwards to the front. I'd start at the back of the book and I worked backwards, which is why you see that I have suggested errata for these scenarios because they, they, I have assumed they've gotten the least amount of attention. Now, right now, I bet there still is a large number of issues with a large number of scenarios in in the uh, in the book right I, I make a note here to say that like there are various other typos in the scenario book and various other issues at play um, the more that we sift through the scenarios the more we'll find right that that's my assumption and if I were to spend more time with the game I would be continuing to fill in the blanks here that need to be notated um, but the one good thing I'm pretty sure has happened now is that with the information in here, I think the problem I had with sieges is fixed. So I had a major issue back then with how sieges were performed um, with supply. So the whole interaction of baggage trains and supply attrition and you know, when could you forage in a city, and how did, uh, there was a bunch of confusion, because the rule book just did not word it in a clear way, and there was no example of play to make sense of it, and so 
for a long time, like I felt I didn't understand how sieges were supposed to work in a process perspective. Like, what what are the if ands or buts about it? Now I think with all the errata from previous errata and the new stuff uh, in here, um, where they talk about you know these these steps, uh, and I think there's another line in here somewhere in here. I forget exactly where it is in here. Anyway, the, the point is, I, I think sieges work now. That seems to be the case. Like, if you put all the errata together, that, that appears to be the case, and it works. Um, the only thing that I'm still not sure about, and I had created a, a thread about it, was, okay, with, with the errata that's in place now, and very specifically, there's this line that uh, if a hex or city is foraged during a land movement phase, it may not be foraged again during the supply phase. This is a this was an important change to what was in the rules, and it really threw me for a loop because it then called into question, well, how exactly how exactly does all this really work? And I just I basically had to write up like I help me understand what's up, help me understand the the right thing here because I I am once again concerned with how the game is is working if I look at the rules there is a line that helps answer my question but I want someone to to I want a real answer from someone <laughs> that makes sense what was unclear is like okay if I'm gonna check supply if I'm gonna check supply for a stack there's a chance let's say I'm foraging and I don't have a baggage train I'm gonna I'm gonna in the game, I've got to roll for a forage attempt, and that forage is going to help me supply some units. Now, the implication is that an unsupplied unit can't move in the land movement phase, so you leave them behind, right? You leave them behind. They're not going to move, so you either stay there, uh, or you move on, right? And the guys that get left behind, at least in my previous understanding, the guys who got left behind could roll for supply in the supply phase. And then they'd probably be okay. But with this errata saying, hey, a hex or city can only be foraged w once, that basically guarantees that those units left behind are going to be removed from the game. And they're going to be removed. And the only way to stop that is to move a baggage train into the hex with those leftover units. And I could see circumstances where you would want to do that if you have a baggage train nearby and it, it makes sense to make that movement. Um, but otherwise, it's just a, it, what it becomes is a really weird... And it's because it, in second edition, you just check supply once in your turn and that was it. And some people say that's too deterministic, it was too easy to stay in supply, okay, fine, whatever. Um, but you didn't have this weird situation where, like, it's two different s supply phases, and then what? And which, which to me is like, why would you just not remove those units that didn't get supplied in the land movement phase? And the answer is you could move a baggage train to them, and they could use that to draw supply. Or some other, you know, somehow something else could happen that they could get supply. And that sort of makes sense, but it's like a confusing set of operations then the assumption was like well what if they can move they can move anyway it's just they have to be marked as supplied um, what then right do they check do they do a supply check in the supply phase in their new location I don't know right now the only thing I have to help me here is a line in 13.2 that says during a movement segment of a player turn the active player must ensure that any unit he wishes to move and or fight in this player turn is supplied, which is slightly different wording from up here, where it says you just check supply if if you wish to move or fight. Here it is more clearly stated that they have to be supplied in, or, in order to move or fight. So, I, I mean, I guess that's the answer to the question. The answer here is probably, if you want to read the thread, you can go check it out. Case A, unsupplied units can't move. Um, and this is this is my game example. 
I, I think the fact that I even have to like ask this question and figure out what's what is that this game needed an ex an extended example of play. That that's something that is missing from some decision games. I've noticed. Um, I don't have very many, but of the ones I have, like I can't I can't recall if they have really good examples of play that illustrate the game mechanics. Um, Imperium Romanum does not have an extended example of play from an official source that can be used to verify how rules are interpreted. We need that more than anything for this game right now. I think maybe with the errata as provided, the game can work. Like the action, the rule book, the rules of the game can work. Uh, there's still some things that need fixing from the scenario book. In fact, I think the scenario book overall just got less attention than the rule book, <laughs> and even the rule book had had errata. Um, you know, it, it, the game's probably more playable than it was a year ago. It still has stuff to be improved upon. And I need to mull over how much I want to be involved in that. But again, I, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna update my unofficial document, and uh, hope that we can make use of it. Um, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Anyway, one year later, the Empire Strikes Back, Imperium Romanum. Hopefully, we get more, we get more errata, we get more fixing, and if the community's got to do it, we'll do it. Um, right now, I don't know that I would recommend this game to somebody or not. I think it's a very n niche product, even for a historical war gamer, because it is. It's got a lot of weird historical detail, but it's awfully fiddly, and there's just a lot of weirdness here to work out. Um, if you're interested in something set in like Roman era or ancient world stuff that is a little more straightforward, um, there are other games out there. Uh, Pax Romana, uh, Time of Crisis, you know, there's other stuff out there that are just on a completely different level of complexity that worth that, that's worth looking at. There's no other game that does what Imperium Romanum tries to do. It is unique in that way. Um, and it's just a shame that we that this edition, when it first came out, was not as polished as it could have been. But maybe it's getting there, right? I, maybe it's getting there, and we'll look again at this game in some time. Maybe if there's another errata update again in the future, or you know, when we're done with the Dark Valley and I'm not playing something else, maybe we get it back on the table and I can do another video. I'd almost want to replay the Gallic Revolt that I did make a video of here you know, a two hour long video, I'd probably not make it so so lengthy. But I, I kinda wanna try it again with just okay, here here are the siege rules now, uh better explained, and you know, there you go. Give it a shot, right? That's something I kinda that might be fun to do as a redo, as a redux on that scenario, but I don't know. So there we go. Just some thoughts again on a game that, you know, I covered in the past and if you were following the drama in the forums, uh, you know, what's up. There's still, you know, there's stuff like this where there's something that should be in the scenario book that is not, and you need it to play the game properly, and there's no errata for that for some reason, and people are asking the question, um, and we've not heard from anyone. It, it's just that kind of stuff that needs addressed in some capacity um, and an extended example of play. So... All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for this one. Um, we're going to have some more uh, content on the way and uh, more Dark Valley. So stay tuned. Uh, have a good one. Take care. Keep gaming.